we often say, use what you have or you will lose it. Well, God is not taking it from you. Let me tell you something right now. And I want you to pay attention to this. God does not take anything from you. God does not take anything from us. God is basically finished with us. God finished his work on earth and in earth. When God created man, he finished man. Man is and was a finished product. God's laws are guiding us. So God is not watching as if he's standing directly over us, watching our every move. But God has instilled laws in the earth. So those laws are governing us and God is not snatching away. God is not taking away from us. What it is is, when we don't apply the laws to our lives, what, what it is, is if we don't know the laws that we should be applying to our lives, I'll tell you what's wrong. The application that we are using is wrong. We are not using God's world properly according to the laws, according to the instructions, and then we feel like God has taken. If you don't use it, God will take it. God doesn't take. God is not our enemy. We are our own enemies. So the reason it seems like we don't have, or as Jesus said it again, those who have will be given more, but those who don't have, even what they have will be taken from them. That simply means it's a simple explanation for that. Because if you're not using it, then what are you using? Here is where the taking comes from. If you're not using what God gave you, if we are not using the stuff that God made us with, then we are using the wrong stuff. Using and applying the wrong stuff is what caused us to walk around in lack. It is not God. God is not a taker. God is a giver and he's gave us exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask for. So when we claim that we don't have or that God has taken something, you can almost guarantee, as a matter of fact, you can guarantee that we are using the wrong stuff just like our forefather Adam. Adam couldn't see himself clearly and we say that God kicked Adam out. Well, Adam was using the wrong application. The application that he was using did not apply to God's kingdom. So Adam, in essence, was the founder. He and his wife were founders of a different kingdom than what God had established because they were using the wrong stuff. We are today living on earth but we are being guided and directed by an invisible city I'm going to tell you this and I want you to connect all of this together everything that you've heard I want you to connect this with it we're getting ready to finish now but I want to talk to you about an invisible city and I'm going to use this invisible city to show you your hidden thoughts of God. I'm going to show you your hidden thoughts of God. You believe that you are living in a certain world. But all you can see is what you can see. 
because of this invisible city. You don't even know that your actions, most of your actions, 95% of your actions are not even from your own volition. You are being moved because you are living in an invisible city. An invisible city is controlling every move you make. Even the thoughts you have about God are controlled by this invisible city. Watch this, I'm going to show it to you. Early on in Genesis, there was this man by the name of Nimrod. I'm going to show you your hidden thoughts about God. The invisible city that I'm getting ready to reveal to you is going to reveal your hidden thoughts about God. I'm going to show you what's been controlling and limiting us for the longest time. But I'm ready to set some people's minds free. If you would only listen to my videos, I would set your mind free. Watch this. My mind is being set free. Every message I preach, my mind is being set free. I'm preaching to you. I'm teaching you. But I'm also listening. I'm also reflecting. I'm on my way to greatness today. So here it is, these hidden thoughts of God because of this invisible city. So this man named Nimrod, now God said about Nimrod, he was a mighty hunter. Nimrod, a mighty hunter. He founded a city by the name of Babel. Modern name for that city is Babylon. Also Iraq, that area. Mesopotamia, that area that included Iraq. Babel, Babylon. Nimrod was the founder of all of that. Now, the story says that Nimrod built a tower to evade God's law. Now this is the story that was told to us. The story was manipulated. The story was twisted because of who the star of the story is. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. Because of who Nimrod is, the story has been manipulated. Things have been twisted. The identity has been stolen. But now God called him a mighty hunter. When you go back and read the story, you'll see what a certain type of man called Nimrod. We're talking about an invisible city that has influenced the way that we even think about God. I want to show you how deep it gets. It has cut down all the way to the sinews, all the way down to where the spirit and the soul meets. It has stolen the soul. It has snatched the soul of those who are the result of this faulty teaching. Those who are the victim of this faulty teaching. A nasty thing they have done. Caused you to not even be able to see God correctly. Don't even think about seeing yourself properly. You can't even see God properly and clearly because of the lies that were told. And so they said that Nimrod and the people with him, they were trying to evade or get around God's righteousness and they were talking about that God destroyed the earth because of wickedness and he destroyed it with water but if you look at the story you can start to see cracks and dents in it because first of all the flood happened before Nimrod's time 
and Nimrod came from a certain ancestor. I'll go ahead and tell you that. But it was said at the time of the flood that God wouldn't destroy the earth anymore with waters. So if Nimrod was trying to get away from God's law by building the tower, then Nimrod was ignorant and stupid and there's no way that he could build something as great as the Empire State Building without modern tools and machinery, then he was ignorant. That's what they're trying to get us to understand or trying to get us to think that Nimrod was ignorant, but God called Nimrod a mighty hunter. I'm here to shake up or to shake down or to destroy that faulty foundation. And so, since Nimrod knew or should have or could have, he had access to God's word. He came after Noah and he should have understood that God said, I ain't going to destroy the earth with water no more anyway. It's going to be fire next time. So fire can burn down the foundation. It doesn't matter how tall you build a building because fire starts at the root. Fire gets down all the way to the root of a situation when you burn something. The fire burns out all impurity so you can't escape the fire. Nimrod wasn't that ignorant. And so the story goes that as he was building this tower, God came along and confused the language. First of all, I want you, you don't have to be a religious scholar to think about this. First of all, I want you to tell me who confuses people. Who's the author of all confusion? I want you to tell me that. Please, tell me who's the author of all confusion. Is it God? Who is it? It may be your God, but it's not mine. My God is not the author of confusion. So this story says that God came down for one thing, you have to listen to that. God came down. I'm telling you, I wish God would have peeped his head through the clouds, through all of this confusion, and told me when I was 13 years old, Lawrence, nobody is coming to save you, son. Not one person. You better start thinking for yourself. I wish he would have peeped his head through the clouds. And so, God came down, listen to that. You have to pay attention to what I'm saying. The author has an understanding of God that's not totally correct. Because he doesn't see God as being everywhere at once. For God to come down, that means that he has a dwelling place that's not everywhere. So already God's identity is mistaken. That's that invisible city I'm talking about. That's controlling the way that we think about God. There's the first thought that God has to leave a place like man. So see the author is thinking that God is like man there's the first sign of an invisible city that's controlling your thinking we still think like that today because we are still affected by that invisible city that has us looking but unable to see and then after the author says that God came down he saw what the man was able to do. Watch this, it gets confused. That God saw what the man was able to do when they come together. 
y'all not listening to me. I'm trying to teach you something, but you too religious to hear this. When man comes together, this is what he's able to build. Who is it that kills, steals, and destroys by division? Who is it who does that? Is it the God you serve or is it the enemy? I'm just trying to reveal to you the enemy. So God saw what man could do and he dispersed them. Here's the second thing. That particular God doesn't understand that you can destroy something by scattering something. Any man knows that if you have an ant mound and you kick those ants, you disturb that mound, you just take a shovel and throw it all over the yard. You didn't get rid of the ants. What you did was you've caused those ants now to build multiple mounds. You don't hear what I'm telling you, but I know what I'm talking about. When they call themselves destroying the body of Jesus, they released Christ. Now they destroyed the physical man and they set the spirit free. So when people are persecuting you and they are, their words are destroying the outer man, they cause you to turn towards the inner man. They cause you to look at your inward most self. And that's when you dig deeper. So keep on talking about me because after a while you're going to make me dig deeper into my real self. You're going to make me believe that this outer man is not my true nature. You're going to make me start looking at God in a minute. You keep on attacking me and you're going to make me look at God in a minute. You're going to make me see my true self in a minute. If you keep on attacking this earthly temple. That's what Jesus was trying to get the people to see. Jesus was trying to tell them that this earthly temple needs to be destroyed. So that you can see where the true worship takes place. I'm talking about the living God who's the real God not some man-made God who has to come down from a particular dwelling. I'm talking about a God who lives in you. That's what I've been teaching you for the longest time and you fail to hear me. But I don't want to give up on you and just start being selfish and go on and be great without you. I'm trying to call you to come on with me. And so let's keep on talking about Nimrod before I get happy. So Nimrod, or God, who destroyed, they, they put this on God and say that God is a destroyer. God is a scatterer. But that's man's mind. That's that invisible city. They can't even see the story correctly. So they say God destroyed. They don't even under, so, so here's what I'm telling you. That these people who have gotten their hand on the holy word. They used it for their own good. They don't even see the truth of the story. Because of the hatred in their heart. You better hear what I'm telling you. Because they hate a particular people so much. They change the story of it. To benefit them. Watch them. I don't care if it hurts you right now. The truth has to make you free. So. They took the story. And said that. God was mad at Nimrod. But God called Nimrod. A mighty hunter. And so. If you take an ant mile. And 
scatter the ants, what do they do? Say it with me again. Say it with me. When you scatter ants, ants multiply. They take the thought with them and spread all through your backyard. Say all through. The whole backyard is inundated with ants who are building kingdoms. At first they only had one, but when you scattered them, now they have built kingdoms that are in unison with each other. They've taken over your whole backyard. So those who took the story and manipulated it to their own or for their own benefit, they don't understand God at all because God knows all. But the story goes on and it says that God took their language and confused it. This is their way of telling us who was the original man. In their zeal of hiding the truth, they've told us who was the original. So it came from one tongue. I want you to listen. You have to listen sometimes. You have to open your eyes to see this invisible city. So they still have us believing that God is out there instead of God in here. They have us living a lesser life because of our image of God. So they've taken the true image of God. This is what religious folk have done. I don't want you to get off on some racist tantrum and fill your heart up with hatred. But this is where we've been directed to believe that God lives outside of us. And I'm talking about all men. God lives in us. And so let me go ahead and finish now. The city that's invisible, it for one causes us to believe that just like in Nimrod's day. It causes us to believe that God is like man, which he's not. It causes us to believe that God doesn't want us to be great, and that's not truth at all. Man are the ones who don't want you to be great for their advantage so that they can use you. I'm talking about the religious mind, not the spiritual mind. The spiritual mind knows that just like those ants scattered all over your backyard, that if we come to have the same mind, we can build kingdoms right here on earth that are in unison and that are according to God's law. Isn't that what God wanted us to do from the beginning? God said, replenish the earth with what children yes physical children material things but moreover God wanted us to use our minds and build according to how he had been building he's telling us when he says replenish he's saying that everything is already here everything already exists but everything is not seen. That's what that word replenish represents. That everything exists. God already did it once. You're not listening. I know you're not listening. Because you are too full of what man has taught you. Replenish means that I've already done it. You were in me when I did it. What I need you to do is to remember who you are. All you have to do is remember who you are. And then you will replenish the earth. You will build the earth in righteousness. And that's all God wanted us to do from the beginning. Is build 
in righteousness. And so let me finish this story about Nimrod. Now that man has been scattered all over the earth, you have a progenitor. That's what Nimrod represented. Nimrod represents a kingdom builder. You haven't seen that because the story has been stolen from you. Nimrod represents a kingdom builder. So those who were so-called scattered, they weren't scattered at all. They were placed. This was supposed to happen. The only reason the Tower of Babel fell is because that was the first of its kind. That was the first of what we call kingdom. And I want you to go back to the Bible the next time somebody tell you some faulty doctrine. I want you to see whose line Nimrod came from. A kingdom builder. So don't let people allow you to think ill of God and put these little limitations on him. And the invisible city that I'm talking about is the foundation upon which our belief system has been built. It's beneficial for people whose desire it is to manipulate you for you to believe. It's beneficial for you to believe that God is outside of you and that you don't have any good in you that you are weak that you are not great that you should sit back and pick cotton that you should sit back with this $11 mentality and wait on heaven to come well let me tell you something if heaven is coming heaven is coming whether you wait on it or not but Jesus said hold up the kingdom of heaven is not like something that you can see. You're not even going to see it coming. Not with your eyes. And then he told them, the kingdom is already amongst you. So guess what he was telling them? All you have to do is live in it. Because everything that will ever exist is already existing. But the reason man seems to be on the outside I have to go ahead and shut it down the reason that man seems to be on the outside is because man believes that he has not man believes that he has not the gift of God and as long as you can to cultivate the thought of lack. You will get more lack. That's why Jesus said, those who have, will have more. Because you have a mindset of cultivating more. When you know what you have, when you know what you're working with, you know you are convinced that you can produce more. When you know that you have the foundation in you, then you know that this is not your last stop. Where I am today, this is just the process being worked out. But those who have not, they say, well, what you see is what you get. They telling you that I'm blind I don't see anymore and I'm not going to ever get anymore. Leave that person alone. If you've spoken to them a few times, leave them alone before they cause you to start thinking like they think. Those are they who are watching the world pass them by. They're not even alive. Final thought. If you are not living in God's world, you're not alive. Glory, hallelujah. I pray that you got something out of the message today. 
Amen.